Well, clearly a lot of hype going into this one tonight, and of course there would be. This game determines who takes first place in the White Pine League. Thanks for tuning in to Friday Night Blitz. I'm Brady Frederick. We've got eight games for you, so let's get it started with our game of the week. The top two offenses in the White Pine League exchanging blows tonight. And this one would start off as expected. Lapway's first play from scrimmage. Quarterback Titus Yearout wants it all, and he finds Mason Brown way ahead of the Prairie defense. And Lapway would go on to strike first as he breaks into the end zone for a 6-0 lead. But Prairie had the answers. Productive drive ends with Taden Hibbard breaking through, and he finds the end zone, evening this game up at 6. When Lapway gets the ball back, it's Hibbard once again making plays. He sacks a year out on fourth down for the huge loss. So when Prairie gets back to work, they just go ahead and let Hibbard do his thing. It's another breakaway on the ground to give the Pirates the lead. Now we said this game would come down to the defense, and boy did it. Year out feeling the pressure, looking for the first down. Wyatt Ross comes in for the interception, and Lapway cannot get a break tonight. Prairie gets back in scoring position. This time the Pirates go through the air. Quarterback Lane Shoemaker with the short pass to Colton McElroy. He puts the Pirates up. 18 to 6 after breaking in. So Prairie would start to run away with it, but I've got to show you this play. A moon ball from Shoemaker to Brody Hasselstrom, the running back looking like DK Metcalf as he shakes off the defender and punches it in for the score. Prairie has proved their case. They stay undefeated and at number one in the White Pine League with a convincing 58 to 26 win. Over to Lewiston High School, it's homecoming. The Bengals playing host to Post Falls for their final home game of the year. And it would be a game everybody in attendance would not soon forget. We'll kick things off in the second half. Everything knotted up at 14. The Bengals give it to Cruz Hepburn, and he lowers the shoulder on the way to the end zone. This kid is a walking hit stick. The Bengals go up by seven. But after a few drives stall out, the Trojans would start to fire back. Jackson Anderson surveying the land. He airs it out, finds his receiver all alone. Nobody's going to touch him. He takes it the distance. So the Trojans tie this one up at 21 apiece. But here's where things start to get wild. Lewiston would go up by two after the defense forces a safety. There would be just under five minutes to play. Lewiston knocking on the door. McCarter steps back, airs it out. It's the wrong color jersey instead. Coast Falls picks it off, and they have blockers on the return. The Trojans end up taking this one 99 yards all the way back to the house with only 237 left on the clock. So the Bengals are going to need a quick response, but boy did they deliver. They give it to Hepburn and the senior says, don't worry guys, I got this. He walks into the end zone untouched. The Bengals go up by one with under a minute to play, but Post Falls would have to move quick. Anderson drives down the field. He gets the Trojans inside the Bengals 10 yard line. Seven seconds left in the game. It would come down to the leg of the kicker, but that ball is wide left. Pandemonium at Bengal Field. The fans storm it, and the Bengals survive in a thrilling 30-29 win. Meantime, a tough night for Moscow as they take on Lakeland. The Hawks led 49-0 to start the third. Thomas Calder gets the handoff, cuts up the middle, nearly breaks away to the end zone. But a few plays later, Devin Suko would find Richie Thomas at the goal line, and that would lead to another Lakeland touchdown. Later on in the fourth quarter, Lakeland still driving. Elijah Sin makes one man miss. He finds the corner and he goes down the sideline until he is dragged down deep into Moscow territory. That's where we see the last points of the game. It's going to be a field goal. Owen Forsman, the sophomore, 47 yards out. That's a very long kick, but this one is good. Lakeland takes it 59-0. to zero. Over in Washington, a low scoring game between Clarkston and the East Valley, and that's because defense would reign supreme. Adonis Jackson coming in for the interception to stop the Knights right in their tracks. Clarkson had not scored up to this point, but once they did, the play was a doozy. Carter Steinwan with a short pass to Landon Taylor. Taylor cuts right through the traffic, and he's going to do the rest. This one goes all the way in for the score. But the PAT on the play would be no good, so Clarkson would need to score once again to stay in this game. They would end up stringing a nice drive together in the fourth quarter. Steinwan hits Tiger Carringer, and he's going to get them up the field to the 50-yard line. So, in the end, this one, just like the last game, is going to come down to a field goal. Landon Taylor on fourth down. He's going to get it about 25 yards. Snap good, hold good. The kick is good. How about that to take the lead? Both teams in the LC Valley holding on 
leaving it to the special teams. They win this one in victory formation, 9-7 as the final score. Clarkston remains 4-0 in Greater Spokane League play. Now staying on the, over the Palouse, the Pullman Grounds came into tonight's matchup against Rogers, ready to roll. The opening drive, Pullman senior quarterback Riley Pettit shakes off the pressure, avoids the, the sack, scrambles, right, extending the play, finds Tanner Barber making the nice grab for the opening score. After another trip to the end zone, the Pirates would respond. Senior wideout Anthony Deerfield taking the kickoff 90 yards all the way back to the house and getting the lead down to six after the two-point conversion. The Greyhounds would answer quickly, though, and it would continue to pour it on. Sophomore Riley, Pett, or Riley Pettit finds sophomore wideout Champ Milwaukee. He takes the short pass, tips toes down the sideline. He gets in for the long touchdown score. That puts the game out of reach. Pullman runs away with this one 45-8, dominating at home. And back down to the LC Valley, the Asotan Panthers hosted the Northwest Christian Crusaders. The Panthers got on the board early. Freshman running back Peter Eggleston taking it up the middle, not going to stop until he finds the end zone. That gives Asotan an early one-score lead. But Northwest Christian would answer back. Junior quarterback Mike Bowman steps up in the pocket. He airs it deep, and that one is right in the bucket for sophomore Ryan Waters. Tying this one up, Northwest Christian would ride that momentum. They get the road win 19 to 14 as the Crusaders take down the Panthers. Now over some eight-man action, a cold one tonight out on the Camas Prairie. The Lewis County Eagles would host the Deary Mustangs. Homecoming night going on as well. At the goal line, Lewis County's Gage Crow trucks his way into the end zone. The Eagles would take a 30-6 lead after the successful two-point conversion. And that Eagle defense was stepping up in the late game. Deary getting into the red zone. But look at the Eagles fly to the ball. They set up the Mustangs for a fourth and very long. Deary's Wyatt Vincent finds Dawson Bovard on the screen. He gets a nice 10-yard pickup but it would not be enough for the first down. That's how the score would stay Lewis County with the 30 to 6 win giving their fans a happy homecoming. And down in Troy, the Trojans hosted their new league rival, the Logos Knights. A cold and chilly one on the Palouse, but the Knights had control from the get-go. The offense would not be stopped. Senior running back Aiden Elmore takes the handoff, turns the corner down the sideline, and the Knights go ahead by 50 in the third quarter. Now the defense was getting it done as well with plenty of turnovers as Henry Sunley forces the fumble and recovers it. Now defensive lineman River Sumter also getting in on the action. Check out this nice sack right here. Stalling Troy's offense before they could reach the end zone. Logos getting it done in all aspects of the game tonight. Finishing off with a 66-20 win on the road as the season continues to wrap up. And as we round out our coverage from around the area, let's take a look at our other scores in Washington. The Colfax Bulldogs run away with a 50-0 win over Kettle Falls. Back down in Idaho, Potlatch able to pull away and finish off the Clearwater Valley Rams. That's a 32-18 win. Another great performance for Kendrick tonight as well. 54-0 over Timberline. A great league win for them. Well, that's all from the KLW Sports Desk. Thanks for joining us for Friday Night Blitz. We'll see you on the same time next week.